All right, this section is about arc lengths, so let me begin by telling you how such a thing is defined in calculus. So usually we start with some kind of curve in the plane, and so let's call this point P and this point Q. If we want to find the arc length from P to Q, we divide this up into a bunch of pieces. Let's give names to these, P1, P2, P3, and so on, up to P and minus 1, and Pn. And a sort of reasonable way to approximate the length is to appro approximate the curve by little line segments. So if we write sort of the distance between two of these like this, called P, P0, then the sum of these distances will be an approximation to the arc length. And this is actually an under-approximation because when you approximate a curve with a line segment, you're always sort of missing some of the curve. So the more and more subdivisions you take, the, the larger this number will be, and eventually it should level out if you have a nice curve, and that gives you sort of a definition of arc lengths. In calculus, we're usually more concerned with functions, so how do we compute the arc lengths of the graph of a function? Well, instead of dividing the curve up into pieces, initially we'll divide up the interval we're looking at into pieces, just as you would with uh, an integral. So I have x0, x1, x2, and so on, up to b, I'll call xn. And this, all of these points correspond to points on the graph. So let's label a generic point xi. And this point will be xi, comma, f of xi. Now the distance between two such points, well, let's say I have this sort of generic point and the next point. The distance between these two is just given by the distance formula. So that's just that. And that gives the length of one of these line segments, but we really want to add up all of them. So we just write down a sum where i goes from, say, 0 to n minus 1. And so this will be an approximation to the arc length. Well, it turns out this approximation can be actually written as a Riemann sum. And what I mean by that is xi plus 1 minus xi is just delta x, if we've done an even subdivision, and we have to do a little more work with this piece. By the mean value theorem, the 
this expression, so it's sort of the average value between xi and xi plus 1, the mean value theorem tells us this is equal to the derivative at some point in between xi. So this is some special point in the interval xi to xi plus 1. And remember, this is just delta x. So this tells us f x i plus 1 minus f x i is equal to f prime at x i star times delta x. Now let's use this to rewrite our approximation. We have the sum of i equals n to 0, or i equals 0 to n minus 1. And here I have delta x squared plus this thing squared. And, well, both of these contain a delta x squared, which I can factor out and then take the square root of it. And this is good because this here is actually a Riemann sum. It's the Riemann sum for this integral. So it turns out, as the limit as n goes to infinity here, we get that we get this integral. So the whole point of this demonstration is that here is our formula for arc length.